In light of the public's buzz surrounding the Falcon 9's second stage malfunction, it seems that more people are becoming interested in SpaceX's first spacewalk mission at the end of this July. So, how is SpaceX prepared for the Polaris Dawn mission? And will the Falcon 9 incident delay this mission once again? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. On the night of July 11th, Elon Musk's Falcon 9 rocket experienced an unfavorable event, specifically the second stage undergoing RUD, a tongue-in-cheek acronym that stands for Rapid Unscheduled Disassembly. This has made rocket enthusiasts quite worried about SpaceX's future missions, especially the plan to launch entrepreneur Jared Isaacman and three crew members on July 31st on a commercial flight featuring the first spacewalks by non-government astronauts. Indeed, this could affect the mission schedule if the FAA, which licenses all space flights, requires SpaceX not to launch Falcon 9 until the incident investigation is complete. However, I'm confident it won't be too problematic for SpaceX. They've launched 70 flights with their Falcon rocket series since January 1st, averaging one launch every 2.7 days. That's more than total the number of all orbital launches by all other countries this year. With this lightning-fast launch pace, SpaceX can quickly demonstrate the suitability of any recommended fixes by engineers to address the issue causing the malfunction. Furthermore, commander of the Polaris Don Jarek Isaacman spoke up on X's homepage saying, SpaceX has an incredible track record with Falcon 9. I can say from personal experience, they're very transparent when issues arise. I got no doubt they'll arrive at a cause quickly and ensure the most cost-effective and reliable launch vehicle keeps delivering payloads to orbit. As for Polaris Dawn, we'll fly whenever SpaceX is ready and with complete confidence in the rocket, spaceship, and operations. Elon, the head of SpaceX, immediately responded to this encouragement. Thanks, Jared. We'll investigate the issue and look for any other potential near misses. We're tracking to do more Falcon flights this year than Shuttle did in 30 years, the vast majority of which are uncrewed. A major advantage of this super high fly rate is that we can identify and resolve problems that may only occur one out of every 1,000 flights. This is impossible on a low flight rate vehicle, so you shouldn't worry too much. Join us to discover how exciting SpaceX's Polaris Dawn mission will be. If there's no issues with Falcon 9, the Polaris Dawn mission will remain scheduled for the earliest between July 31st and August 6th. It'll include the company's first spacewalk capsule spacesuits and a Crew Dragon capsule with an interior modified for vacuum exposure. Polaris Dawn is the first of three anticipated missions in the Polaris program, funded by billionaire philanthropist Jarek Isaacman. On September 15, 2021, the first entirely private mission in history saw a privately owned and operated rocket launch and privately owned and operated spacecraft into orbit with private astronauts aboard under a private lease contract. The spacecraft was SpaceX Crew Dragon, and the launch vehicle was Falcon 9, which carried the inspirational four mission to an altitude of 357 miles. That's 575 kilometers. On that flight, the passengers were made inside the spacecraft. But for the next Polaris Dawn mission, also leased from SpaceX by Jarek Isaacman, the goals were more ambitious. The spacecraft will attempt to reach an orbital altitude of 870 miles, 1,400 kilometers, higher than any crewed flight since the Apollo 17 moon mission in 1972 and surpassing the highest Earth orbit mission set by Gemini in 1966. However, during their flight, the crew will also test and validate SpaceX's new and improved spacesuit design in the vacuum of space, collectively undertaking the first all-civilian extravehicular activity EVA event. At first glance, the spacesuit that the Crew Dragon crew typically uses and the suit for the Polaris Dawn missions may seem identical, but they've got several key differences. Reports indicate that the joints have been redesigned to maintain flexibility even under pressure. Additionally, the thermal management system and the helmet visor have been improved, now featuring an outer coating that serves as a sunshade. The suit is also equipped with cameras and a display screen to monitor critical parameters and values. A difference compared to the EMU spacesuit used by NASA for ISS extravehicular activities, EVAs, is that Polaris Dawn astronauts will not have a mobile life support system during their EVA. Instead, They'll receive oxygen and cooling water through hoses connected to the Dragon spacecraft. However, Isaacman anticipates that a mobile life support system for the SpaceX suit will be developed in the future. The Dragon spacecraft has been modified for depressurization and to allow the front hatch to open for spacewalks. 
The upgraded spacesuit features improved mobility, new thermal management, fabric, materials borrowed from the Falcon's inner stage and Dragon's hull, helmet cameras, and new high-tech heads-up display, HUED. The initial high elliptical orbit will have a lower altitude of 120 miles to minimize crew exposure to the Van Allen belt radiation. After completing experiments, the altitude will be reduced to 430 miles or 700 kilometers. Indeed, the mission sounds incredibly awesome, but this is precisely what the SpaceX team is meticulously preparing for to ensure a smooth mission. Due to the complexity of the mission and being the first attempt, the team faced numerous challenges during the prep phase. This directly pushed the initial launch date, which was as early as the end of 2022, back multiple times, with the latest delay being in early July. This involves several essential technologies for the mission and is also part of the program, including the EVA spacesuit, laser communication links between satellites from the Dragon spacecraft and Starlink constellation, and some adjustments for the lack of an airlock in the legacy Dragon capsule design. According to a tweet from Isaacman last December, the EVA suit or Dragon spacecraft designed to be exposed to the vacuum of space is much more complex than traditional ones. Last but not least, the Van Allen belt that the Dragon plans to approach contains a significant amount of radiation. The radiation exposure levels in those orbits over a few days are equivalent to several months on the ISS. Avionics don't like radiation, which means there are many things to analyze and address. However, the team ultimately overcame their technical boundaries. Things almost kicked off in January when SpaceX released a new rendering of the upcoming Polaris Dawn mission. This rendering somewhat revealed the first image of the future spacesuit. On May 4th, after more than two years of development, SpaceX published the first introductory video of their most anticipated spacesuit, the SpaceX Extravehicular Mobility Unit EMU suit. Following that, at the end of May, the media captured images of a SpaceX Dragon moving at KSC, most likely resilience for the Polaris Dawn mission. This vehicle could be on its way to one of SpaceX's facilities near LC-39A or SLC-40, where it will undergo final preparations before the launch. Hey, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. All right, getting back into it. This is a very important mission for SpaceX. In addition to achieving the first commercial spacewalk and the highest orbital altitude ever recorded, Polaris Dawn hopes to test Starlink laser-based communications in space for the first time. Data from the tests could help develop space communications for future missions. In addition, Polaris and SpaceX selected 38 scientific experiments from 23 partner institutions, including NASA, the U.S. Air Force Academy, and Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, intended to advance the understanding of human health in space and on Earth. The crew will use ultrasound to study decompression sickness, for example, and will research space flight associated neuroocular syndrome, a disease unique to humans who fly in space that can have severe debilitating effects. Upon landing, astronauts will undergo tests to study anemia, an unavoidable effect of traveling to space and other conditions that might impact humans on Earth. The scientific aims of the Polaris program differ from the commercial spaceflight ventures offered by companies like Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic, which could be classified more aptly as space tourism operations. Tickets for those companies' orbital and suborbital offerings, some of which involve research, can range from the hundreds of thousands of dollars to the millions. Isaacman and SpaceX's inspiration for, meanwhile, raised a quarter of a billion dollars for cancer research. Isaacman's been particularly outspoken when it comes to accessibility in spaceflight. And by taking on much of the risk himself, the billionaire businessman has lessened the pressure on SpaceX. Isaacman's funding of the Polaris Dawn has allowed the company to focus on developing spacesuits and other technology necessary to make sure the mission runs smoothly. Polaris Dawn also represents a critical juncture for SpaceX's Starship, the linchpin of the company's planned human spaceflight offerings. The largest rocket ever built is not quite ready to fly humans, but when it is, the third Polaris mission is expected to be its maiden voyage. Like the Falcon 9, Starship is developed to be fully reusable and has so far completed four orbital test flights, each more successful than the last. Starship's currently preparing for its fifth flight in the coming weeks, which promises to be a major milestone. Before Starship's flight, SpaceX will have another Polaris mission with no set timeline, simply called Mission 2. This mission will be carried out using SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket and Crew Dragon spacecraft. Both these vehicles have already been used by NASA and a few commercial customers like Axiom Space. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.